Are you Doctor? No, I'm Baz. Are you Doctor? No, I'm Paul. Am I Doctor? No, you're Rook. Have a lozenge. Huh. This must be time round then. we have here is a failure to communicate i don't like it any more than you do welcome to time ram my name is barry williams well that's how he wants it this is my co-host mr paul perry hello that's how he gets it this is my other co-host mr rupert booth hi <laughs> and tonight oh i see i don't get a <laughs> I even set it up for you so you could go, and that's what he is. <laughs> no. And uh, tonight we're dealing with the fifth Doctor classic, The Invasion of Time. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Famously originally written for Tom Baker in the 70s, mm -hmm. yeah. at which point it was a six-parter. Mm. But, of course, mm -hmm. uh, Peter Davison doesn't have any six-parters. I mean, we, no. could, we, could, we could amalgamate Black Orchid and The Visitation and just get rid of Black Orchid forever. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, then again, Black Orchid might be entertaining if it's a Pertwee story or something like that. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, I don't really want to watch it, but it'll make quite a fun podcast, probably. Yeah. 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 yeah depending on yeah. that. Let's hope for Hartnell. Yeah. <laughs> he'll, he'll be understanding towards the, uh, the poor chap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, when do we want to set this? Hmm. Well, we've got two companions in the original, Leela and K9. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both of whom have quite specific functions, and one of whom is going to leave. Yeah. We could do it around sort of Arc of Infinity time, I suppose, around then. Um, I guess no one leaves in Arc of Infinity, but... Uh, what, about, flight? what about Terminus? And then it can be Nissa who leaves. Oh, that gives us three Because in fairness, that, Nissa, Nissa is more likely to, mm -hmm. to get married to somebody mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. Tegan. Yeah. I mean, who's mm -hmm. going to marry Tegan? <laughs> Oh, God, Tegan. can you imagine Tegan's the lovely. home life of Mr. and Mrs. Tegan? <laughs> Mr. Like Mrs. George Tegan. and Mildred. <laughs> Until she gets possessed by the bar and starts kind of going, yeah. look now! <laughs> what? <laughs> Souffle! Well, well done, Tegan. <laughs> Thanks. Fair enough, we could do that, yeah. Um, Terminus, good, I'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's right. going to be Nissa falling for Andrew. I can totally buy that instantly yeah. with Leela falling for Andrew. Yes. And, and Turlo doing nothing, yeah. Great. Turlo, well, no, Turlo's going to do quite a lot. Turlo's going to have to be given a gun and some scanning <laughs> equipment um, and be able to interface with the TARDIS, but he's a lot for him to do. Yeah. Yeah. Te Tegan's got fuck all to do, though. Yeah. yeah. Tegan, Tegan will have to take the leader part and go outside and start stirring up the Shaboggans. Well, she'd be quite good at that, yeah. I would yeah. totally watch the spin-off series Tegan and the Shaboggans. <laughs> <laughs> like so Josie and you. the Pussycats. Yeah. <laughs> What's new Shaboggy Woggy? <laughs> I suppose that's their band, isn't it? Shabuki Wookie. Shabuki Wookie. I think it could do with losing two episodes, to be honest. I it don't could think quite it happily to... lose two episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's, I, think, it's, I think of any story we've had so far, it's the easiest to go, we can so slice this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, I watched it with my son, uh, thinking, yeah, it's a fourth doctor story, it'll be all right. But yeah, it's mm. quite slow. Yeah. I do find the novelization by Terence Dix a good deal more entertaining. Yeah, because he, he narrows through. it all down. Into yeah, I remember it being very thin. 20 pages, it's yeah. Not, it's not enormously long, no. It's mind, like... mind you, his The War Games is incredibly thin as well, so go yeah. figure. Um, <laughs> I I found it enormously entertaining, as I always do. I, mm. I, I really quite like The Invasion of Time. Um, yeah. For the wrong reasons, and for a lot of the right reasons. Yeah. It's not a bad script. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good on. Yeah. yeah. At all. Yeah. You do get a lot of padding in episodes three and four. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, and two episode yeah. five. But and one and two. No, one and two. I think are quite tight. I'd argue that. Six. I think I think one and two are pretty good. Six. Yeah. Well, six. Yeah. Yeah, six. Yeah, six. <laughs> yeah, I will argue about six. Um, it is. It is funny though how you you can literally see the money running out as it goes on. Well, it's just getting cheaper as it I, uh, progresses. I think what happens. I was reading up about it today, uh, and we've got to bear in mind that what we're looking at here is actually not Sharda. Um, yeah. You know, and we've got to cut up some slack for that. The only scenes shot in a studio on studio quality cameras with a panopticon and the interior of the Varden ship with those three seats in. Which and is the now. TARDIS console room. That's no, the no. Andrew Pixley says that was in TCA. Does he? Mm -hmm. I don't think it was. I didn't know there was dispute about it. I've always, and I was reading today, I think in Envision, which isn't always the most accurate thing. Um, but also you look at how it's lit. That's, that's lamps on the ground reflecting off the time rotor. It looks like nothing... If they're in a studio, there's no reason for them doing that. They've got the lights from above, as always. So for that reason, I'm saying, yeah. no, it was done in the, in the hospital, mm. along with the corridor, the big corridor in, on Gallifrey, and, yeah. and mm -hmm. um, Kellner's booth, and and the president's chamber, yeah. and Barusa's, all done in this mental hospital yeah. on OB. Yeah, and then and then and then you get the sort of saving graces that they finally get to do well. They did some bits on film, I think, to begin with. And it's just this mishmash of the three styles. It's yeah, astonishing. it's very odd. I was thinking that. Yeah, it's, it's very place, odd yeah, to yeah. look at. Yeah. It's very yeah. strange. Now, mm. in its defence, none of that registered with me in 1978. No, no. I loved yeah. it in 1978. It really, really starts to suffer. It's where they get to the workshop at the end, and it's clearly they've <laughs> covered the windows in, in plastic. And uh, we, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they literally put bin bags over the even yeah, yeah. better. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it is bin bag. And I love the fact that they even draw attention to a bin bag. There's a little alarm light at it as well at one point. And, you know, because let's go in closer. Yeah, let's, let's really show the bin bag, guys. But it's probably just a repurposed Varden. The sound is shocking as well because it's so yeah. echoey. Yeah. Because, yeah, of, yeah. because obviously it's in a building that wasn't meant to be yeah. filmed in. So. It's it's a relief it's done in 78. If it had been done in 75 with like sort of Santaran experiment type OB cameras, it would look really horrible. Mm. Yeah. The cameras are at least a bit better for OB. But yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a miracle, really, the invasion <laughs> of time. And then you get Derek Deadman. Um, it's also a miracle, yeah. Oh, he's something, yeah. It, it certainly is. He yeah. certainly is. A another, yeah, another example of what we've said about so many actors mm. um, in the, the episodes that we've done. Derek Edmonds a perfectly serviceable comedy mm. actor. He's mm. he's excellent in Time Bandits and mm -hmm. Never the Twain and things mm -hmm. like that. He's a good comedy actor, but he's just the wrong person. Apparently, they had some uh, they had some official notes from upper echelons of the BBC because no one could take Derek Edmonds seriously during the recording. <laughs> so there was some criticism oh, of the performance yeah. stuff. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> it does seem odd, you know. Obviously Kevin Lindsay's passed away. But mm, you can yeah. you can maybe get out a umatic of the Sontaran experiment and have a look at it and go, Oh yeah, someone a bit like that. <laughs> it's almost as if they've gone who's under five foot four? Oh Derek Kevin, yeah, we we'll get here. Yeah, who's you know, Sontaran's <laughs> apparently are sort of short and wide. I yeah. know. Derek Dedman. <laughs> go ahead. Time round. We open with a nice uh, model shot, which was the first thing they film so yeah that's going to look great um well and, it might um, not it might not depending we're doing terminus has all got chroma key defects chroma key model effects yeah. so it might look absolute shit yeah <laughs> I, I finished the trap of describing what's in the original version there yeah okay oh yeah. right sorry yeah so uh yeah no you're right so it's terminus time so yeah it's probably going to be a shitty video horrible horrible yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is a shame so we're, we're on a downer to begin with <laughs> okay <laughs> And then presumably we get a lengthy scene in the TARDIS with uh, Nissa and Tegan and Turlo arguing with each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. While the Doctor's outside, he's on an, one of these ships and he's uh, talking to these, they look like massive eggs. Yeah, mm, I remember yeah. thinking that years ago. Yeah. I was thinking, why is he talking to these eggs? I didn't totally didn't understand that they were the backs of chairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is he talking to these eggs? Um, and he's, uh, he's signing a tree with them. He's uh, signing away... The time lords he's portraying the time lords yeah. immediately mm. not normally something you'd imagine peter davison doing i suppose no yeah. imagine tom baker doing to come to that so now well but i think straight away thinking about this earlier i thought you're, you're gonna buy peter davison doing it less mm. peter davison's yeah. doctor doing it less specifically 
Yeah. So Davison's going to have to doing a lot of work to sell it, yeah. and he's capable of that. Mm-hmm. So this could be really, really interesting. He's not going to be unhinged. I, I mean, I think Tom's brilliant at selling the completely unhinged fourth Doctor. Yeah. Um, I, I put, you know, fourth Doctor because he's already basically completely unhinged, but then that bit further. <laughs> so that even Leela and Lee, um, Louis Jameson sells it well with complete incomprehension. What I do not yeah. get what's going on here. I don't understand the Doctor for the first time. Yeah. My intuition is letting me down. They they sell it very well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the fourth Doctor's just eccentric enough he could almost imagine this is it this is, yeah. yeah he's just got a bit more eccentric today yeah. um or he's gone <laughs> yeah. mad robert holmes said in the five doctors he always thought that if one of them could go bad it would be dr tom yeah. and when he was working on his version before he gave up and went no i can't no. um and yeah he's right maybe he was unconsciously riffing off this maybe he'd seen this you know mm. So I think actually Anthony Reid said on, on the commentary or on the documentary that, that um, he talked to Robert Holmes about it because the precursor story had been the deadly assassin. Yeah. Yeah. And got advice and stuff like that. So, you know, Holmes may have been aware of it. Mm. Yeah, it ties into the deadly assassin quite well, actually. There's, mm. there's lots of references there. I mean, it was only a... a oh, early, no. Oh, no. We've got season 20, Gallifrey. Yeah. yeah. We've got oh, season 20. And to geez. be fair, we don't know when the deadly assassin happens either. It could be like, you know... That's true. Yeah. Dirty yeah. So, uh, yeah. There's, Hope it's a Troughton story. Imagine all that black and white bit and running over like, these pools of dry ice. For, for why? What, what are they? <laughs> what are they there for? Why don't you just build a nice bridge? Got <laughs> frames. <laughs> you're, you're clever lads. You know, Talos is top notch. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but you're four range, but it's not, not so good, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I blame the timeless child. That We get some scenes on Gallifrey with Commander Andred. Mm-hmm. spotting the TARDIS on his skirt and Kilner's there ordering an Amber Alert. Yeah. yeah. We're not allowed to keep the same people, are we? Because I can't imagine anyone else playing Kilner. I just love Milton Johns and everything Milton so Jones. much anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Just get Colin could... Jevons, who's probably the same. Yeah. Is Colin Baker playing Andred? Then? <laughs> <laughs> Surely he must be. I guess he yeah. must be, yeah, yeah. Oh, as Maxiel. I mean, I love, I love Chris Regard as well, but yeah, I mean, Colin Baker could do it, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, it should be keeping with the 720 yeah. theme. We're not, we're not going to get him an arc of yeah. infinity, are we? So, no, that's true, yeah. yeah. So, if we're, you know, if we're doing a Gallifrey story for season 20, it's wow. like, um, yeah, that's a very different Android, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's yeah. a very different, I can yeah. kind of go with it more, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's not going to be playing it like Maxiel. No, he's no, no. Playing no. Andred, you know, so he's nice. a totally different character. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's going to be coming in and sweeping Nissa off her feet. I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, there's, there's the image for this story. You know, if we're ever going to do an image, you know, one picture, there we go. <laughs> with, with, a, with a heart border. With a heart, yeah. With, with, <laughs> with, with a Sontaran in it going, Are oh, you, Doctor? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> 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 oh, time is clever sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, how's that, listener? How are you doing? I know we're exhausted as well. I think we're spent. Actually, I mean, that, you know, five minutes of episode one, we're spent. We shot our load. Mm-hmm. Can I just mention the really incredibly glaring continuity error that's in this, where Tom w- walks back into the TARDIS and he's not wearing his scarf, having been wearing his scarf when he was talking to the. I can forgive Vardens. them, given the <laughs> conditions they were I shooting. I missed that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and his scarf is on the... Uh, on the. If, if the, Tom had uh, actually walked into Peter Davison, you could kind of forgive them. <laughs> <laughs> Poor me, that would be a bit much. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the TARDIS lands on Gallifrey, right in the Penobscot. Love that and, shot. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. And they're surrounded by guards, and then the, the whole crew come out and get taken to see... Well, Andrew arrests them. Basically, yeah. and then they're yeah. kind of walking down these tiny corridors. Yeah, yeah. which uh, yeah, they've got just about enough room to step around these bits that are kind of sticking into it. Yeah, <laughs> I love that corridor. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to one of these days. I'm going to do a homage to that corridor. I'm going to build a set that you can hardly get down. <laughs> you have to kind of pick your way over. Once you realise it's not in studio, you can kind of understand why it's such a narrow corridor. Yeah, but why put the projecting K frame thing there? <laughs> That's, just to make it look a bit like a head round. You could actually have done a corridor, all right, but no, <laughs> don't put. Oh, you put them in. What for? Then Kayla's got to get random later on. It's gonna... You've got some tyrants, <laughs> don't you? Oh, dear. You've got to love the perversity of the fact that they leave the the massive panopticon 
by yeah. these tiny little girls. <laughs> it's like backstage at a theater, as yeah. well, isn't it? You know, kind of the massive time stage. fucked up. You know, the, basically, the time was just completely fucked up. Who was their interior designer? Yeah. <laughs> Except, of course, that in the Davison era, it's going to be looking like a, a kind of eighties coffee shop. It's going to be all brown <laughs> yeah. and beige. Yeah, and, and, and sushi. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and there are going to be there are going to be time lords sitting around, kind of drinking cappuccinos, going yeah. hop, 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 hop to each other in like <laughs> chairs and shit. Um, <laughs> With with Chancellor Goth in his War Games guise on his big podium, just shaking his head, going, oh, "What have we become? Look at us, <laughs> mysterious and terrifying." Now we're just bumming around the place in beige. <laughs> I hate eighties Gallifrey. You've had this place redecorated, haven't you? Hmm, don't like it. So they're arrested, but then sort of halfway down this tiny corridor, the Doctor says, "Ah, Bruiser," and pops into Bruiser's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Andrew bless him, just goes with it. Yeah. Um, so he strides in to see Chancellor Bruiser and declares that he is the president of the Time Lords because in previous adventure, which may have happened, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's become president elect somehow, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let us pray for the deadly assassin in the boomer era. Or previously. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So is Bruiser Leonard Sachs then? Uh, I so. guess he is, yeah. yeah. Or who's that other guy? Who played him in Five Doctors? Um, Philip Latham. Philip Latham, yeah. Philip Latham, yeah. Either, really. I mean, the, the five yeah. actors. Um, I, I find Leonard Sachs, who's a fantastic actor in general, to be utterly unmemorable in Ark of Infinity. He is, yeah. yeah. He's really not... He's saying he's not the words. Yeah. He's just saying the words, end yeah. of, yeah. and moving the moves, and that's it. Yeah, he's a little bit too avuncular as well, isn't he? Yeah, so, Philip Latham was arch at least, so he'd yeah. be good. He would um, fit it. He would, he'd fit yeah. it. He'd fit yeah. it a lot better. Yeah. He'd fit John yeah. Arnott. So. Yeah, I do yeah. love the first two Barusas. Barusai, Barusai, <laughs> Barusa <laughs> That's what Mrs. Barusa calls him at night. No, don't worry, Barusa Boos. <laughs> You'll get immortality one day. <laughs> oh, dear. Maybe always on about your immortality. <laughs> You're only three hundred. <laughs> So the doctors, uh, he says, I'm the president. There's not much you can do about it. I'm, I was president-elect. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no challenges. Yeah. His first act as president is to insist that he gets his office redecorated. He wants lead panels everywhere. Lead! Hooray. Lead! I'm just imagining Davison doing this. I think he's going to be really quite terrifying. Yeah. Maybe he'll do it quiet. Yeah. Maybe he'll go for the quiet psychopath thing. Yeah. Otherwise, he's, he's going to be running around shouting at the top of his voice and going all sort of high pitch, like he does when he gets... Aerated anyway. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but doctor, you will address me by my proper title. I am president, am I not? You will obey my commands. I think the closest he gets to sort of sinister is in Caves of Androzani when he's talking to Shara's Jack and he does that kind of very sinister smile. Yeah. At one point. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the closest he gets to kind of being, you know. I mean, even yeah. when he's pointing a gun at Davros a few stories earlier, he's yeah. very apologetic about it. He's not yeah. sinister, he's not menacing. You don't really believe he's going to shoot him. No. You you absolutely believe Davros is going to talk him out of it. Mm. Yeah. And just that Davros is actually the stronger personality here. <laughs> so, you know, this this could be terrifying or it could be disastrous. I can't see it being disastrous. I don't think that Davison would let it be disastrous. Yeah. Like he's too good. Yeah. So he's going to be doing something really interesting here. Yeah, it's a shame. On some really him... boring beige sets. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame they didn't let him break out of type very much. Yeah. 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 He's a star. Maybe that's where yeah, he gets absolutely. all the lead and stuff. He kind of just sees the beige and goes, you know, get rid of all this beige. <laughs> Give us some beige lead. lead. <laughs> a bit goldy beigey bronze. <laughs> <laughs> he's got uh, he's got all his companions with him. They're sort of trailing along in a gaggle, aren't they? So we've got Tegan, yeah. Erdo, yeah. and Nissa. Tegan, Erdo, and Nissa. They're not yeah. going to be trailing. They're yeah. going to be yeah. arguing along in a gaggle. It's... Yeah. yeah. They're going to be just this, this kind of moving argument wherever they go. <laughs> three of them. It's kind of trinary argument going on. <laughs> they're not getting much to do. And, and until Andrew, the Andrew, just, this, uh... Andrew just walks in and stuns them with his stage. Silence! <laughs> last quiet! It is a shame with Davison's companions because uh, Nissa and, at the very end, Perry are the only two that have any kind of real interest in what's going on around them. Yeah. Um, it's like Tegan and Turlo and Adric all have varying degrees of not really wanting to be there a lot of the time they just look like they'd rather be somewhere else so they're preparing for the doctor's induction as president mm -hmm. and uh yeah companions get to turn up get to see it all, all go on mm -hmm. and uh, he's invested they put on the various bits of rasslon uh, he's got rasslon's hat i bet turlo's eyeing up the sasha rasslon going yeah. out that you know 
<laughs> I can have off with that. <laughs> Get back to I try grant on. you the bits of Rassilon. <laughs> the rod of Rassilon, you just wouldn't. You just turn your hand and say, I don't want it, thanks. <laughs> I know what Rassilon was like. I know where that's been. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he gets hooked up to the Matrix and immediately collapses. Yeah. 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 End of episode one. Episode one's the same, really. We're not cutting anything in episode one, are we? That pretty much. I feel like we make need to move it a little bit quicker than that if we're going to get this. Do we? Episode. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't see where we're going to get a good cliffhanger next, though. I don't know. In yeah. time. Because bear in mind what you'd have to build in some more. We, we've absolutely glossed over what happens to the companions. Exactly as episode one completely glosses over Leela. Once yeah, yeah. Out of the target. Yeah, I mean, it really yeah, forgets yeah. about it. Yeah. You get one scene of her kind of choosing clothes with Andrew and then going, oh, yes, nice. Mm. Already clearly eyeing her up and going, hmm, time half. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, yeah. So you'd have to give them something more to do. And yeah. I think that would bulk out episode one. You know, a bit of explaining about Time Lord history or something, what's going on here, why maybe covering why, in case we haven't had the deadly assassin, why, why the doctors, he is, yeah, yeah. yeah. somehow president. You know, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe there could be a kind of branching narrative here, I can't, I can't help myself, where, whereby if we don't get the deadly assassin, then they get summoned back to Gallifrey with that little hexagon thing on the console, like yeah. an Ark of Infinity, uh -huh. just drags them back. And it's kind of, yeah, sorry, you're up, mate. Because <laughs> reasons of yeah. Rassilon. Um, and someone gets out of scroll saying the reasons of the Rassilon. reasons of Rassilon. We'll have to remember That's... this so that in the fourth Doctor story, Trial of the Time Lord, he gets made <laughs> president at the end, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, when we get Christopher Eccleston's The War Games, it really gets complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and William Hartnell's The Timeless Children. That's the real... Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm hoping for Hartnell in Deadly Assassin. I think that'd be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Man, hand me, sir. They'll kill the president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be fantastic. Huh? <laughs> Just hitting Amazing. that samurai with his stick in the Matrix. Oh, episode three lasts about five minutes. You're just going to fight everything. <laughs> episode Fuck three would be... Yeah. Fuck you. Episode three would be one of those unconvincing studio jungle sets, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Episode three will be the one where Hartland was on holiday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the entire episode voice. supported by a stunt double, yeah. It's, it's all shot on location. It's all done point of view by the camera and then Hartland <laughs> having a voiceover later. There's a hand that comes in sometimes. <laughs> like hit crocodiles and shit. <laughs> Genius. Oh, um, yeah. Well, apparently it's genius. The telly snaps look good. <laughs> <laughs> They're all so blurred, though. You can't tell what's going on. Just... I know, I know. That's because it was all point of view. It was always camera was always. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That's what Jeremy Bentham said. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, fellow time travelers, and welcome to the Doctor Who Target Book Club podcast, the only podcast to discuss in story order all the Doctor Who novelizations. My name is Tony Whit. And every two weeks or so, I'm joined by a two- to three-person discussion panel, including our so-called expert who's been a Who fan since 1979. That would be me. We also get the views of intermediate, casual, and novice fans who either have never seen the show or who have never read these books until these podcasts, including... Dalton Hughes. And... Alison Fitzsafried. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you find good podcasts, or even ones like ours. You're listening to the Time Ram Podcast. Enjoy and keep time ramming. Are you ready to travel through time with us? Then check out Traveling the Vortex, a Doctor Who podcast. For nearly seven years and more than 500 episodes, we've traveled from one end of the vortex to the other, making different stops with different doctors, reviewing everything from TV stories to audio plays, from books to comics, and more. Sean, Keith, and Glenn take you on a journey through 50-plus years of Doctor Who episodes and spinoff materials. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, so be sure to check us out. And now, we're a proud member of Direction Point, a Doctor Who podcast network. You're listening to Time Ram, a Direction Point podcast. So basically what's going on is the Doctor's not had enough preparation time before mm -hmm. attaching himself to the Matrix. Yep. The Time Lords kind of, they, they, they talk, they're talk split between those that want to sort of take him to hospital and Baruza just wants to have him arrested. <laughs> but yeah, I don't see why the two things are incompatible. Do they not have a security hospital? Maybe they do. <laughs> if the Monoids have a security kitchen, then yeah. the oldest species in, you know, 
in the universe have have at least you know thought ahead about these things. Well, they've got limited sets, so they just take him to Peruse's office and uh, stick him on the couch. Yeah. So, well, a lot of Gallifrey yeah. looks like a hospital, uh, apparently. A lot of the TARDIS does as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In an interesting There's him in his TARDIS. He's got a, a hospital <laughs> we're, bed. We're at, least, we're, we're at least going to have some good TARDIS in this version. Yeah. 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 I mean, it'll be the same walls again and again and again, but, it, yeah. it, you know, it'll be yeah. TARDIS. It might be less visually interesting, really, won't it? Yeah. It might, actually, yes. Mm. Yeah. So, as soon as the Doctor gets better, he expels Leela. Ah, hang on. Um, Tegan. 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 And Nissa. And Turlo. Uh, Nisser and Turlo. Maybe he leaves Turlo in the TARDIS. He wouldn't leave Turlo in the TARDIS. I would not leave Turlo in the TARDIS. He always leaves Turlo. Turlo's constantly left in the TARDIS. Turlo spends his life in the TARDIS. He, yeah, maybe he's the K9 part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is K9, but, yeah. but it doesn't make sense to leave him in there to begin with. Maybe he sneaks back. He sneaked off in episode one. There's where your extra episode one material is. Turlo sneaks off and finds his way back to the TARDIS, which miraculously is unguarded. Yeah. So, I mean, he does have form for leaving a couple of them in the TARDIS and just... Yeah, but if Turner's yeah. just joined, which he has mm. in the previous story and has proven to be a bit of a shyster, which he may not, he'll probably prove to be a heroic Thal or something in the Daleks. He'll probably, <laughs> he'll probably be Ganatus. Um, <laughs> th then I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave him in the TARDIS on his own. He's going to nick me TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. Plus, it makes the Time Lords look really stupid. I suppose they need K9 in there. The Time Lords are really stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we're doing with the Turlo's always... We had this problem with the Sea Devils as well, didn't we? I kept yeah. driving yeah. into the sea as far as I recall. The, the problem of Turlo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't well, we do that? He's got the they technical must have abilities. Seas on Gallifrey. He yeah. just walks off into the sea for a bit. <laughs> Actually, he, Turlo he would do probably... do that in every story. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Turlo would probably be loving the Time Lords, wouldn't he? Because, I mean, you know, he's a public school boy. Yeah. The Lords, you know. yeah. He'd be, he'd, he'd be in them. there. He'd be a Time Lord in he'd five minutes that. flat, wouldn't he? And this has got the technical skills, so she, we could leave her in the TARDIS. She um, can stay in the TARDIS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. Tegan's a bit mouthy, so she it. gets expelled. She's, She's going to get expelled. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, and the Doctor Turlo... literally says that. Can this one's a bit mouthy? Send her outside. <laughs> yeah. And Turlo's the Time Lords all go. Yeah. yeah. If that's your first <laughs> act, Lord President, you've got me vert. Turlo's <laughs> already sneaked off somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That works. Maybe Turlo sneaks off to find Rodan early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, likes a bit of road out. Yeah, yeah. Um, ah, good. So what? we're sending Tegan out now. Yeah. So Tegan's going out before Leela did because Leela ran away and did lots of padding down she corridors. Did. Yeah. So she gets expelled now. Yeah. Turlo then takes the leader part and goes and finds Rodan, which is good. a much more believable relationship. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, he sneaks off and all that sort of bit. We cut out all the leader running about and getting captured, and then and then Turlo and Rodan get expelled later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, but Tegan's already there as a kind of matriarch. She's like Katrika. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By <laughs> the time they get there, she's gone. She's taken over the, the flies. <laughs> she, she's gone full on all of them. Yeah, yeah. She showed them how to make boomerangs and. She, yeah, yeah, she's told them to talk them of the outback. She's taught them all the Aboriginal tongue, which <laughs> she knows. We know that from Port of Doomsday. She can yeah. speak that in exactly the way I can speak old English. I mean, I'm fluent in it, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm sure we all are. Yeah, I'm yes. sure. Yeah. So we can probably cut a fair chunk here. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we've got all kinds of stuff with the Doctor finding a door in Bruiser's office. Yes. Yeah. That needs Tom. That needs Tom. Turn to camera yeah. going, not even my sonic screwdriver can get me out of this one. People <laughs> yeah. say that. People say that. When I watched it, he's looking slightly off camera. He's not down the barrel. Oh, he's yeah. So he's yeah. just very slightly off. It kind of looks like he's about so, to talk to the camera and then thinks, oh, I shouldn't do he's this. Not, <laughs> like he's not actually answer. breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. He's just doing it quite a lot of damage. Yeah, in the original version, the Doctor finds time to kind of nip back to the TARDIS and have a chat with presumably Nyssa, who's in on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get her to um, have a look into the security fields around Gallifrey. So the reason yeah. the reason that K9's in on it, mm. he explains, the Doctor explains, is that K9's kind of mindless. Yeah, so he can't, his yeah. mind can't be read. Yeah. So what are we seeing about Nyssa here? Um, well, yeah. I mean, as long as she yeah. stays in the TARDIS, she's all right. Yeah, uh, but as soon as she needs to come out of the TARDIS, it's problematic. Yeah, mm -hmm. 
Does she yeah. ever have to come out of the TARDIS? Well, K9 does trundle around and zap some things. Zap some things? We can send Turlo to zap the things. Turlo can zap some things, yeah. 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 Turlo zaps the things, then goes and meets Rodan. Mm-hmm. I should probably mention in passing, there's quite a nice scene here where Leela's followed him and she's hammering to be let in the TARDIS. And he, yeah. he her in. And he does a very strange reaction, sort of childish reaction, where he puts his hands over his yeah. ears. Yeah. yeah. It's an interesting acting choice on his part, yeah. I, I like it. I like it. I think it's quite yeah. affecting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because it's so simple, as you say, it's childish. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. Childlike. Yeah. Um, Childlike, yeah. 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 And also puts me in mind of kind of... One thing that really hits me about this story, it always has done, apart from the first time I watched it when I was too young to understand, is how the hell... Would you keep up a mental barrier like that? If, so, if there was someone who could look into your mind mm. yeah. all the time, yeah. and you had to keep them out all the time by well, just yeah. being frivolous and strange and, and bonkers. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a heroic effort. I don't know how you do it. I mean, because, you know, if you say to someone, don't think about chocolate cake, don't yeah. imagine chocolate cake right now. What are you imagining? Yeah, chocolate cake. Yeah. So it's um, um, porn. <laughs> He's just thinking about porn all the time. Sorry, I thought you meant think about like bars of chocolate cake. And so I thought, poor what? Porn. Now I'm thinking about, about porn. porn. <laughs> right? yeah. Involving chocolate cake. He's blanking out, blanking him out by thinking about nothing but porn. I tell you what, though, I'm not thinking about the presidency of Gallifrey, so it's working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and double crossing the Vardens. No, no, I'm not thinking about that. I'm, not, I'm wondering what Don't she's doing. Don't think about with... double crossing the Vardens. I'm not. I'm thinking about what she's doing with the spatula. Um, <laughs> which is remarkable, believe me. <laughs> like Andred, time uh... have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that scene that Tom has with K9 though mm. um, how fucking noisy is K9 oh, in that no. scene? oh yeah yeah he's really it's noisy in season deafening. 15 yeah he's, he's at his worst he's incredibly yeah. noisy yeah. in season 15 it's ridiculous and it's just his radar ears just his ears, ears going his. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah now my dad made me a K9 that had ears yeah. did that Mm -hmm. I think a couple of years later than this, but not not much more than that, with a Lego motor, which was yeah. really ingenious. It was a really ingenious thing. It was all mechanical, of course. Excellent. And it made exactly the same kind of <laughs> noise. No How wonder accurate. Tom was irritated by K9. <laughs> I'd be irritated. Yeah. You've, got, you've got an enormous amount of lines. You've got an enormous amount of technical lines about bouncing things off red shifts and shit. Mm. Yeah. Why they've got... <laughs> <laughs> Relentlessly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to help. <laughs> I wonder he kicked it sometimes, uh, and then uh, it's kind of off you go, and it's <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't get any better. <laughs> Even with Dudley Simpson going, tinkle, tinkle, ding, 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 the acapella sounds of K9, the new Time yes. Ram album. <laughs> That's Williams, Booth and Ferry in perfect K9 motor harmony. <laughs> no other podcast gives you this. <laughs> Ever. I'm absolutely sure of that, in fact. You can tell when the prop is knackered and they're pulling it along in a wire, because it's the only time that it doesn't kind of go... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and that bit where it goes down a slope, and I, you can just—I can almost hear the gears stripping. I'm just—I'm wincing when that. Whenever I see that shot, the, the builder in me is just going, "Oh, oh, oh, oh. that's that's not going to be working by the time it gets to the bottom. That's broken again. That's another half hour, <laughs> at least." Yeah. K nine. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Turlo has found Rodan in the. Uh, she's in the transduction barrier office. Lovely thing about Turlo. His ears don't go. <laughs> <laughs> really as far good. as we know. As yeah. as, well, in canon, you know, at no point. <laughs> um, maybe it's a try on mating thing, who knows? <laughs> His ears start going. <laughs> oh, God, if that's the case, how have that species ever survived? <laughs> that's not sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear it down the corridors of the TARDIS. Just, yeah. Oh, it's um, just her looking at porn again. It's just, it's got <laughs> not worn. He's, He's on his pond, something. <laughs> Come on, take him some soup. 
<laughs> and a wee crystal he could rant at. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, I'm aroused. Nothing. Uh, nothing. I'm all, Doctor. Why? No, it's just your ears are making a fucking racket. <laughs> yeah, well, your time rotor's knackered, so fuck off. <laughs> oh, that's an image I'm not going to get out of my head anytime soon. I'm just having got past the spatula. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's making that noise as well. Jesus. Next time you're watching K9 going down a corridor, you're going to, why am I feeling horny? <laughs> oh, please be quiet. Who's Rodan? Who's playing Rodan? Oh, oh, Helen Mirren. Mirren. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's practically the only woman in this part from uh, the companions, so uh, yeah. Um, obviously not Helen. Mm-hmm. Um, Lorraine Chase. <laughs> yeah. It's no, common for a Lisa, time, lady. Lisa Goddard. <laughs> with massive hair, like wow. Terminus. <laughs> oh no, we can't have someone from the same story either, can we? We can't. We can't just nick someone from Terminus. Mm. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Nick Peter Davison. Yeah. Yeah. We've got <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and Sarah Sutton, you know, yeah, and yeah, Mark no. Strickson. Yeah. yeah. Is it just yeah. me that every time I hear uh, Lisa Goddard's name, it always comes into my head as with Lisa Goddard? Mm-hmm. 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 From Give Us a Clue. It Baz won't have that. But, oh, uh, yeah. it's on ITV. But I do. Oh. I, 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 it's programmed. Yeah. Programmed. Lisa Goddard and Lionel Blair. <laughs> yeah. So I'm still thinking about Tilo's turn eight, you know, teenage years. You know, he, he can't <laughs> went quietly in his room without his mum knowing because his ears start going. <laughs> well, he has to wait until his mum and his dad are having sexy time because you hear their ears going. <laughs> then that's the only time he can wank. <laughs> that is all, all, all he kinds of wrong. All he commissions <laughs> Dudley Simpson to compose some wank music really loudly. Um, so, you know, and so his parents hear ding, 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 ding. they just go, Oh, bless him, he thinks so. Now. <laughs> so, every time he's having a wank, he's got Dudley Simpson and an orchestra in his room, just got <laughs> strumming away. You, you mean you so don't? <laughs> Dudley's <laughs> gone by <laughs> then. It would be Roger Lim. Start, I mean, it would be Roger Lim, be Roger oh, Lim with a synthesizer, Lim. wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. dear, it's Roger Lim. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's Roger Lim. Roger Lim always ends up doing, apart from Peter Howe, apart from the Five Doctors, the Five Doctors an honourable exception to Gallifrey mm. in the 80s. I just yeah. hate how it looks and sounds and how the Time Lords act. There's just nout to them. The nout nor yeah. summer. Mm-hmm. Beige Gallifrey. Down with beige Gallifrey. <laughs> <laughs> it's orange these days, isn't it? Well, I do, I was, I was going to say before, I do love the fact that, I don't know, did they pick up on... I think, is it one line in the Sensorites? Yeah. The Susan says, the sky's yeah. orange. The sky's orange, yeah. Um, and then in Invasion of Time, you've got an orange filter over it. That's that's not natural lighting. That's an orange filter. That yes. yes. Interesting, isn't it? It does seem to kind of fit in, yeah. Well, you've got, this is, Graham Williams was was quite into reading fan magazines, things like that, Dwas stuff. I mean, this is all there was yeah, then. Okay. Yeah. So he would probably have tuned into, they were always going on about Susan. Mm. You know, these these are the early Dwas ones, which are basically just lionising the Hartley era and nothing else all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and constantly going, ah, oh, Susan once talked about silver trees and orange skies. And so Graham mm. Williams would have gone, orange sky, but like yeah. that. People credit j and <laughs> with this. Nah, Graham Williams did it first. Well, actually, Verity Lambert did it first, I suppose. She went, the <laughs> Daleks went down well. Um, <laughs> we'll people them like back. them, we'll yeah. do them again. But But the fandom rather than the audience. We've got slightly off track. Um, yeah, we have. It's the time runway. <clears throat> it is yes. the time runway. I was talking about um, Turlo and Rodan. Yeah. Uh, he's there in the office, just hanging around. So Did we, uh, did we decide uh, who it was? Oh, it's Lisa Goddard, isn't it? Yeah. Lisa Goddard, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Lisa Goddard. <laughs> <laughs> Without Lionel Blair, unless he's still. <laughs> maybe he's the Arden commander. I don't know what either you're talking about there. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> With Michael Parkinson. Um, so he's there to uh, be a witness when the transduction fields drop. It's because mm-hmm. the doctors got Nissa to switch them off. 
Yeah. And he's gone back to the Time Lords. It's called the Council Together. And he said, Welcome to you, your new masters. And then yeah. um, some bits of sort of wobbly yeah. plastic. Yeah. 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 Um, it's the Vardans. It's the Vardans. Hey. Yeah. The Vardans. And, Pete, and Peter Davison just go, ha 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 ha. Mm. Mm. Um, and shoots fire from his crotch in triumph. <laughs> For he is Lord President and can do whatever the fuck he likes. <laughs> yeah, so the Vardens. Can we talk about the Vardens briefly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, the Vardens seem to be a consequence of it being made the way it was. Mm. Yeah. As in, you know, you had your basic, you know, Colin Maps and the effects designer says on, on the documentary, yeah, that was disappointing. I prepared these sheet things, you know, these reflective plastic things yeah. sprayed with chroma key paint so you could break them up and all sorts of things and i expected vastly more to be done to them in post right. but because half of it was being done on ob mm. ob you had you know you could do chroma key mm -hmm. but you couldn't do much else necessarily so they had to use an effect that was going to be consistent right. on the studio in ob i think someone said afterwards i think brain winners ran through read what we should have done was do them in a gallery only day afterwards but we haven't gotten on to the fact you could do that yet mm. all right yeah. So that's why they're so shit. Yeah, I don't think it helps as well that they put on a sound effect. Yeah. It sounds like somebody rustling tinfoil, and mm. they look like tinfoil. So, that's, so that doesn't help at all. There's an interview with Dick yeah. Mills that I remember reading years ago, and I thought exactly what you just said, where, yeah. where he said, you know, I watched the, the playback, and I thought, oh, I know exactly the sound I want for these. It just illustrates that perfectly, and it's tinfoil <laughs> being tickled. It's just, no. <laughs> you do everything but that, surely. Yeah. You take everything you can away from that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, they just blurred the cameras yeah. a lot more. So it's just yeah. these amorphous shapes. That's all you'd have to do. I, I, you know, you, they could have done more. It doesn't help that the lead Vardan is not a great actor, is he? He's, oh, kind he's of, appalling. So, and he's I, I incredibly like, Scottish as well. Yeah. Alarm. Scottish. Alarm. Um, yeah. He's, he's, yeah. He just sounds like a teenager. Yeah, he's kind he of, uh, looks like a teenager. He looks like, yeah, when, when he, he turns up, he's about... About four foot tall, isn't he? He's just and, and this is the impressive. thing about the Vardens. After all that, I kind of prefer them in their chroma key plastics. Yeah, form. it's like, oh, yeah. this is, them, is yeah. it, you know, at least that's some chroma key plastic rather than some blokes in olive drab <laughs> <laughs> talking like this all the time. The funny thing is, the other that he's the guy that gets all the lines, mm. the little Scottish fella, but um, yeah. I but the, the other yeah. guy is that guy from Sapphire and Sapphire Steel, Steel, who's a really good actor. And why didn't they give him the lines? Yeah, yeah. All he has to do is run off with his eyes wide open a bit. Yeah. You know? No. And really odd decisions in this story, yeah. Mm -hmm. You do get the sense they kind of ran out of time and just panicked. And the decisions mm. that can't be explained by the production fuck-ups. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, Derek Deadman being cast is nothing to do with it being on OB. No, yeah. sure. Sorry, guys, I mean, but no. They had a limited sort of pre-production as well, didn't they? Because they had another script from this guy who wrote this impossible script, the, the, yeah. the Killer Cats of Ginseng or something, Yeah, which has stadiums full of these giant cats. And then uh, I think they were still they were still writing the script. They were doing rewrites uh, during rehearsals. So uh, yeah. I think Graham Williams ended up writing a lot of it himself. Am I the only one who thinks the Killer Cats of Ginseng sounds awful? It does, like... I yeah, it doesn't. They sound could have like done it with models, yeah. though, couldn't they? They could have had like a model stadium and just like the goodies, just all these kittens. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> a root. Ginseng's <laughs> a root you make tea out of. Yeah. The kind yeah. of cats of ginseng. Well, all right, keep them. You can keep your ginseng. I'll go down the health food shop. The bloke that wrote it, I can't remember his name. We're going to have to dub it in later. But he had Is it worked David on David Weir. David Weir. That's it. He had worked Sorry, on the translation. David Weir. <laughs> <laughs> he would worked on the translation of um, the water margin. There yeah. you go. So he was yeah. really into all this kind of Chinese culture. There you are. Like that, you know, so that's what there he was you going are. to do. The trouble is, the trouble is, this is one season after the talents of Wang Chiang. So, you know, yeah. if the Killer Cats of Ginseng had been done as a story, it would now be cancelled. Yeah. Just outright, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be allowed, I think. <laughs> so we should probably do some plot. Um, yes. Yeah. Where are we in episodes? We've done episode one. We, we, we kept the well, cliffhanger. We, 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 uh, did I argue successfully for that? You did, so, yes. So, thank you, good. So uh, we, we've, we've just finished episode two of the original version. Um, with yeah, the yeah. Turn turned up. Yeah. Oh, I think we can carry on with episode two. I think this is a good midpoint for episode two. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is getting along fine. Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. So uh, in the meantime, various companions have been ejected from the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, is Turlo taking Rodan with him or is it, are they staying inside? Right, so Turlo yeah. 
Turlo goes and, and destroys the um Turlo barriers. goes and destroys the barriers, that's right. Yeah. Then he yeah. rapidly gets to Rodan. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the, you know, okay, K9 goes underground and blows up the barrier control weapon things. Maybe Turlo doesn't do that. Maybe he goes to Rodan and has to hold her up with a gun and press buttons on her console to lower mm. the transduction barriers and then, you know, kidnap her. Yeah. Um, it implies that Turlo knows what's going on. Yes. Yeah. Well, all right. So, yeah, I can't answer that. Okay. Um... Is that a euphemism, press buttons on a console? And open a transduction barrier. Let's talk about Tegan. Let's talk about Tegan's run. We just cut tastefully away as soon as he is his ears start. So, um Tegan. Tegan's outside the sea. She's met the outsiders. Yeah, she's met the Shuboggans. Yeah, they're not called Shaboggans in, no. in the script, are they? Um, are they not? Okay. No, that's a, a fan fan, a fan thing. They yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of assume that they're the, the Shaboggans. Yeah, yeah. Well, they are. Well, as... well, they're clearly the Shaboggans in the Capaldi era. Yeah. So mm. they are the Shaboggans. Yeah, I mean they're only explained in the story as they're, they're, they're dropouts, they're time world dropouts. Yeah, yeah. dropouts. They're kind of hippies, aren't they? They're kind of hippies. Yeah, they're out there yeah. with spears, the spearing things, whatever's still alive. Because this is all written by men who were hippies in the sixties. Mm. Yeah. They were dropout yeah. writers, and then they dropped back in again and went to work at the Beeb in those halcyon days that we really should have lived in. <laughs> I like the fact that these guys are quite hard. They're out there sort of killing things. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah. then Nesbin's their leader. He kind of introduces to people. So this is Presta. And then mm-hmm. this is Ablif. And then Ablif comes in, and he's like, no! <laughs> in, his face. In, all, in all fairness, they're not that hard. I mean, they try and bless them, but they're yeah. pretty hard. They're sort of time um, hard. Yeah, Leela schools them in the original ones, isn't she? Yeah. There's, there's a lot where, yeah, but Leela... Uh, and it's on film. You can do fight scenes, but mm. there are there were a few times in that. There was one bit where she kind of she had to break free of two Time Lord guards, and she kind of vaguely pushed one and waved her knee in vague direction of the other one, and they both kind of went oh, cozy and fell down. <laughs> and she ran away, and I thought, oh, the seventies, <laughs> <laughs> the seventies. So uh, while this is going on, the Doctor is kind of. He's gone a bit uh, dictatory. He's kind of, uh, yeah, he wants to expel all mm-hmm. the Time Lords that might potentially yeah. be rebels. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The Biden's saying, well, you know, just kill him. And he's like, no, no, no. We'll expel him from the sea. Mm-hmm. Nobody can help him out there. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah. Various elderly Time Lord dudes getting pushed out the door. I've just thought of a massive bonus to this bit. Um, mm. Ever ever since the coronation that mm-hmm. didn't happen, Davison's not been wearing his normal costume. He's wearing kind of Time Lord gear. He's wearing like yeah. big shirt and stuff. Um, yeah. Potentially, potentially. I you mean, know, yeah. he could actually. Tom Baker changes back into his normal costume pretty quick. He but, does. Yeah. He does. He does. True. But I kind of said Davison shouldn't in this. We should give him mm. some variation because I could never. The whole thing about him kind of going mad and bonkers and commanding while wearing that cricketing stuff. <laughs> it's kind of undermines yeah. it for me. Yeah, with the collar, you can believe it, can't you? Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, when... that's it. It's the 80s, so he'd be wearing the collar all the time. Yeah, he would. Because <laughs> of these yeah. rarely, rarely worn ceremonial uniforms from the Deadly Assassin apparently are what they wear all the time <laughs> yeah, in yeah, the yeah. 80s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's actually true. They don't walk around with them much in, in Invasion of Time, do they? They, you know, they yeah. wear them for the coronation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should probably mention Andred as well. He's kind of escorting these Time Lord guys out of the yeah. Um, city, uh, yeah. he's kind of very much quite keen to kill the doctor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's his plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Colin would be great at this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, taking them aside and being conspiratorial. Yeah, the doctor definitely must die. Shoot. Yes. So yeah, when the doctor goes back to the TARDIS, yeah, Andrew's there is following him with the, uh, his group of guys, and that's where he sees Nessa, and it's. Love at first sight. Yeah. Well, the doctor's yeah. in there, yeah. Um, there's a great scene in the original where he's trying to put this sort of ha- headband of wrestling on to, to K-9's head. Yeah. <laughs> it's going all over the place, yeah, yeah. yeah. While then, yeah, we, we repeat it, the going, going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clearly cracked down the middle as well. The prop is broken. You can see a really, you know, it's cracked in two. I think by that point, Tom's cracked down the middle, just trying to get it <laughs> yeah. work. And then, as we say, yeah, Andrew comes in to shoot him. Oh, I know what happens end here. Distract him. Yeah. I know what happens. So that, yeah, that's the end of episode two. Then yeah. that'll be the end yeah. of episode two. Yeah, nice one. Nice. Okay, that's going well. Good. Mm-hmm. That's working. Yeah, yeah. This is this is tight. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so, beginning of episode three, can I propose that what happens is mm-hmm. Nissa's dress falls off? <laughs> as it does in Terminus for no apparent reason. Oh, it's because she's hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's because she's hot. <laughs> and then all but... my clothes fall off. <laughs> Anyway, it's all done in the best possible day. <laughs> Even in 1984, was it the Terminus was on? I'm just going, oh, I'm so hot. I just wasn't buying it even then. Yeah. I'm just going, no, I mean, you know, come off it. You can kind of imagine that the original, the original script of Terminus had so had a dropping something else, and the yeah. Doctor finding it, and them going, well, she hasn't, well, she hasn't got anything in that outfit. Oh, she can take a skirt off. <laughs> As, um, yes, yeah. thank you, Wood. She's she is nearly naked by that point, isn't she? Yeah. Okay, so what actually happens? Doesn't K9 stun him or something? K9 stuns him. I mean, uh, Nissa in could the crotch. stun him. Nissa uh, can't uh, stun him. Nissa's yeah. got no laser in her nose. Um, Unless she suddenly discovers that and goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> when Trachonites get to a certain age, we get nose lasers. <laughs> We've already established that Rory's got a nose laser. We can't do that twice. <laughs> Have we really? <laughs> well, there we are. I can imagine Nissa creeping up behind him and stunning him with a a vase on the head or she's thing. still got the ion yeah. bonder maybe she maybe she's yeah. dried out the ion ion bonder. Bonder. yeah 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 uh, and, and just blah, 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 and she you know he's down yeah um, that's it yeah sort of this yeah. in the eye excellent okay yeah. cool Good. actually yeah because she's busy building stuff and she's working on the console and doing things yeah. Yeah, so she's, she's got an ion bonder she's doing things yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 around this point we start to get some explanations that yeah. the doctor has been waiting for the Vardens to materialize. Mm-hmm. And I think at this point he's already, he's had his office covered in lead. So he's already spoken to yeah. Bruiser about this. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is to Philip Latham, isn't it? This is quite fun. Philip Latham. Yeah. 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 Um, and explained that, yeah, he's just tricking the Vardens and, um, they you were taking their chances. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's waiting for the Vardens to materialize properly and then he can work out where they come from and he can time loop their planets. So that's his plan. Yeah. What do we think the Vardens look like now in the, in this version? They're going to be better. Mm-hmm. This is one yeah. thing that's going to be improved, surely. I think there should be one thing. I don't think they should change from the shimmery thing to the crappy men in uniforms. Because mm. the, the humanoid versions, they're only they're in for about half an episode. They're literally <laughs> in for half an episode. Yeah, what are they're they? They're there for? and then they're gone. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> utterly pointless. So are I, they I, to justify building the big egg chairs for episode one? Because, I mean, yeah. why would shimmery mm. things have chairs at yeah. all? Um, that's, what it is, yeah. that's a very good point. Why do they become human? Yeah, it's, yeah. Human. I, su- I suggest we get I, rid of that. We I just love, have them being. I one love thing. at that point that Tom just, just says what everyone's thinking. Yeah, disappointing, aren't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, so you're going to have to pull something impressive out of the bag soon, mate. Fortunately. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. the most disappointingly realised monsters ever, possibly. Yeah. We should probably mention Kellner as well. Kellner's gone full Quisling at this point. He's he's yeah. actively working for the Vardans. Do we have and, a Kellner? Uh, yeah, it was... It was he's a... Colin Jevons. Yeah. Colin Jevons. Yeah, yeah. okay. Isn't yeah. he? Yeah. If we, yes, if we, if really, we can't yeah. have Milton Jones, Milton he's, Jones. He's, he's Colin Jevons. <laughs> kind of interchangeable, really. Milton <laughs> Jones, yeah, way Colin way Jevons, what yeah. a way to grow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A really small amount of people are going to get that. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Who's playing lead Vardan? He has a time for some stunt casting, some JNT mm. stunt casting. Helen Mirren. <laughs> what band is going on at the moment? Is it Lee John? <laughs> no, it's Helen Mirren. It's not Helen Mirren. <laughs> It's not Lee John. Christ. It should be Lee John. Why not? No. It's, it's practically the right story. <laughs> Don't be Lee Johnist. <laughs> Don't Lee John me. Somebody Scottish. <laughs> I can't help it. Um, Peter Capaldi. Peter Robertson. <laughs> Peter Capaldi. Young Peter Capaldi. <laughs> Peter Robertson. Peter Robertson. He's not an actor. Neither is well, the guy who is Lee John. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, we'll come back to it. We come back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're yeah. hardly in it anyway, so they're hardly in it. So yeah. yeah, this is the point where everyone ends up back at the uh, the president's office. The canine leaves Andrew there in the original version. Andrew's got a little thing in his helmet, stops mm-hmm. stops him moving his mind. Yeah, uh, and then they put the stuff back on canine. I don't know why he needs to be in the office to do that, but they do that. And... So who are they putting this on now? Turlo, uh, Lisa. 
maybe this has built something. This has this has something. built something. Yeah, um, under the Doctor's specifications. Yeah, with yeah. the help of Android and his breastplate. Yeah, um, which actually I've realised is exactly the same one that Colin Baker wears in Arkham Infinity. So yeah. Yeah, one could actually do a very easy Photoshop of this with Colin Baker in completely the correct costume. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I may. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's that the Vardas, the time loop, time loop planet. Job done. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. happy. Whee! Yeah. You'll go home. Yeah. Yeah. Please do the back of them. Yeah. And then the Santarans turn up. Yeah. <sighs> And everyone's turned around in amazement, and you know, Mr. Skirt falls off, and Turtle's ears start going, and it's an incredible end to the episode. I love that piece of music, <laughs> it makes me laugh every Amazing. time. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Yeah, it's great, and they look great. Yeah, the Tyrons, you know, they're all still on the stairs. It's a great shot, mm-hmm. um, so and that's... it raises its gun, and that's a perfect, that's a brilliant episode ending in a fantastic fantastic twist and the end of episode three in fairness the costumes are really good in yeah this. No, the, yeah you know while they keep the helmets on yeah. they yeah. must have you know they built three more for it so they've got that much yeah. because you know, they only had the one i think yeah, i think I, I think store i think derek Devon wears the kevin Lindsay one which doesn't yeah. fit him mm. um <laughs> obviously and then you get three more uh i'll have a new one for him yeah so the, yeah because you know. his helmet's been sort of let out a bit hasn't it <laughs> That's the exciting thing. Nobody in the universe can do what we're doing. So uh, the Sontarans, uh, they're led by Store. Yeah, the Store. Sontaran Special Space Service. Right. Who's playing Store? Who's playing Store? Clinton He's Green. not Derek Devon, is he? Clinton Green. Clinton Green. Really? Oh, right. no, I don't know. Who, who, who's the right height? Well, I, I, um, you know, yeah, loads of actors. Um, yeah. Eddie Large. Um, oh, <laughs> um, yeah. John Thor. He's small. Well, he's not. Well, not anymore. He isn't. He? <laughs> Was he small? We Was have he? had him in one before, John Thor. Yeah. So used... he's a who stole it? <laughs> like Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren playing Thor. Helen Mirren is not playing Thor. <laughs> Get Kenny Baker. Have a really small Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> The higher they are in rank, like the, the smaller they are. Actually, Anthony Daniels would, would be a really good Kellner. Yeah. yeah. I really like when I see Anthony Daniels in things other than Star Wars, because he is a really good actor. What, what, what things are these? Well, only he's in, he's in Gorman him. Gas, doesn't he? Is he? And, is he? Uh, yeah. And, I've only uh, ever seen him in a schools programme. Yeah. Probably done in about I, 1978. I really do. Feel sorry for him because you, you do get the impression <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, well, yeah, he is exceptionally rich because of it. But uh... yeah, fuck that. He's all right. Yeah, yeah. He's not suffering. No. Um... Yeah, he's not quite had the career that he probably would have wanted. Really. Ah, well, tough. <laughs> tough golden metal titty <laughs> with a restraining bolt on it. <laughs> so he's playing store. <laughs> yeah, we still have to get a store. Yeah. John Thor. John Thor's store. <laughs> it could be the same. I'll have you, Doctor. <laughs> you, Doctor. All oh, right, you pillowcase. <laughs> your trousers on. I've invaded time and I'm not happy. <laughs> um, Lee John? <laughs> <laughs> no, not Lee John. Lee hey, Derek John. Demon was working. <laughs> uh, and Deck? Um, <laughs> no, they're not. Were they even men, born man. then? <laughs> Ian McShane. Ian McShane. I don't Why? know where he came from. He always looks fairly short. I suppose he was around and working at that point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're not going to yeah. gain much from it, are you? I mean, you gonna... <laughs> how? Oh, I don't know. I know. Um, Christopher Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Why not? He's he just fresh from yeah. the young ones. Yeah. 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 There we go. Chris Ryan. Chris Ryan. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Excellent. Nice. Way ah. better. Immediately. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Barcelona all round. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's going to be playing it exactly like he plays. Have you noticed he plays Kiv and, and Sontarans exactly the same way? Yeah. I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. It's quite shouty, isn't he? He's got any... yeah. Well, he's all, he's, he's kind of 
Ooh, it's oh, a very boy. sort of haughty voice. Yeah, isn't well, it? yeah, 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 yeah you know. Like oh, a... Don't you know about Sontarans? Ah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Sontar. Yeah. So, yeah, the Sontarans are looking for the doctor. doctor. Yep. Uh, but he convinces them that he's just the president. You know, there's no doctor here. Are you doctor? <laughs> if you're not doctor, why aren't you doctor? <laughs> uh, so, Bruiser's listening in from his office. He sets off the fire alarm and they all run away. Yeah. <laughs> And and giving it some with his chin as he does so. So, yeah, they all meet up at the office again. Kellner typically just immediately sides with the Sontarans. He's just uh, he's yeah. all out invaders 100% now. Yeah. Uh, he's trying to tell them that the prison's actually the doctor, but they're like, they're not having it. The trouble is, if he's Anthony Daniels, I'm totally settled on him acting it like 3PO. Yes. <laughs> so I'm terribly sorry about this. I know they really have gone away. <laughs> I'm sure Sontarans are marvellous. <laughs> They kind of hang around in the office for a bit. They meet up there. And then uh, the companions um, lead Nesbin's crew and Andred and a few others back to the TARDIS. And they get kind of shot up on the way. They're, they're not all the way. Yeah, they it. do. In the yeah. tiny corridor. Yeah, in the tiny corridor. They all yeah. get shot up, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is odd because there's plenty of places you can hide the yeah. thing behind, you know. Get behind the K-frame. <laughs> you want to get shot up there. Ablift doesn't make it, I'm sorry to say. Ablift does not. Yeah. Ablift yeah. Is, oh, he's a crazy fool, man, Ablift. <laughs> Listen, um, <laughs> you know, he's, he's one of Doctor Who's clowns, man. He's a happy wee chappy, but no, he's dead. We'll go this way. I oh, know that's Nesbitt, isn't it? I hate that line. Well, I hate the way it's said. We'll go this way. Why, why are you announcing that? That's nothing to announce. Just go that way. <laughs> I would never say that. In, in, well, maybe I would, but I'm weird. Um, but, you know, if we're all just sitting in a, a shopping centre somewhere and deciding what we're going to do, none of us are going to stand up and go, I'll go this way to the others, <laughs> are we? Are we? We made from now on. Mm. Neither of them said no. Yeah, yeah, but from now on we're going to be going. Eh! <laughs> sexual attraction. So, so you know, we're not good litmus here. <laughs> Anything. Uh, we're a very poor sample. Yeah, very poor sample. <laughs> Time round. Brought to you by poor sample. <laughs> While they're doing it, the doctor hangs back with Beruza. He's persuaded him to give him the great key of Rassilon. Yeah. Mm -hmm which has been missing for generations. Mm -hmm. And eventually he does. It's just a key. It's a, yep. yeah, it's a yeah. big old key. Uh, and then they all go to the TARDIS as well. I love Tom just throwing away the first key gives them. Yeah. I yeah. love that bit. And mm -hmm. Come off it, mate. Come. Yeah. That's that's old friends. That's people who know each other for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come off it. I know, I know you. Their relationship really works well. It's, it's, really it's does, really good, does. Yeah. 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 So they go back to the TARDIS as well. And then there's stuff going on with the, the Sontarans need to open a bigger hole in this yeah. force field so the rest of their fleet can come through yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah what is Turner doing right now well, he's having to go up in the hole isn't he no, yeah. he's outside he's outside with Rodan yeah he's he's, 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 he's just hanging quarry. out with Rodan yeah, yeah. he's in an orange yeah. quarry <laughs> I assume Going that Rodan's with them. I assume they've come back to oh the no actually they've all come back yeah they've all come back of course yeah. they are yeah. of course they are yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so this is going to be quite a crowded episode yeah it's quite yeah. crowded we might have to simplify some of the action yes um, yeah. yes in the original version kellner is kind of opening the force field for some tarns and then yeah. from the tardis they managed to close it back oh, down my again word. oh good heavens yeah <laughs> <laughs> master stalk <laughs> So the Sontarans pursuing them into the TARDIS and they're kind of running into yeah. the TARDIS to kind of get away from them. They've kind yeah. of locked the controls so the Sontarans yeah. can't do anything about that. I love, I love, I love them locking Barusa out and Barusa going, if you could just open the door. <laughs> yes. Um, that's gorgeous. <laughs> and Philip Latham's going to be great at that as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they kind of spread around the TARDIS for a bit, don't they? They get um, mm -hmm. Tegan or someone to take them to the bathroom, which is uh, an enormous mm -hmm. room ball. Yeah. Sontarans pursuing them. Yeah. They go to uh, the workshop. The workshop's going to look nicer. The workshop's going to look actually like that's, part of the TARDIS. That's going to be in the studio yeah. and part of the TARDIS, built with yeah. TARDIS wall sets. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So in the original version, K9 and Andred are left there to help Rodan. K9 and Andred are just left there for a bit, aren't they? I think before Rodan yeah. gets yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Because Andred's doing some like time-wasting stuff going, if I had a dog like you, he'd be my sergeant. <laughs> I don't think Colin Baker's saying that. Well, Colin Before Baker's saying know. it to Nissa, maybe. Because yeah. Nissa's canine at this point, isn't she? Yeah. Nissa's presumably yeah. being hypnotised as building the DMAT gun, like Rodan will. Oh, God, no. I don't know. 
there's quite a nice sort of interplay as well between the Doctor and Rodan uh, and these bits as that well. Is, we see they're working is. together. You can kind of see the production team thinking about Romana. You can, point, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely, yeah. yeah. If, yeah. if I love Mary Tamas Romana, but if they'd simply brought Rodan on board, mm. that would have been great as well. Yeah, 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 yeah it would have worked. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. walk, strolling in at the final, at the final shot after after he's brought the canine Mark II box out. Mm. You know, yeah. then the door opens, Rodan walks in, going, "Right, okay, I've just got back from like your labyrinth of TARDIS. What's going on?" <laughs> and Tom just goes, "Boggle." <laughs> That's great. That's a great season ending. Yeah. yeah. That's a shame. <laughs> to, yeah. Well, no, I mean, we've got Mary Tyler's Romana, who's well, yeah. glorious. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so. I do like the Romana. The Romana. <laughs> there's no, there's no Duff Romana, basically. Yeah. There are no Duff Romana. No. 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 Uh, so, yeah, we do get quite a lot of running around here through various bits of hospital while these mm-hmm. Tarans kind of, uh, it doesn't really add up to much, but the kind of no, doctors leave them I'll, off one way and then. A lot of that would be cut, I think. So yeah, the, yeah. The, the, there's there's a point to it, isn't it? Which is like deactivating a thing in the art gallery. Yes, if the sometimes yeah. deactivate this thing, that means Scanner. they can detect where they are. Yeah, yeah. they can find them immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Track them down. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. so that would be that would be that would be Anthony Daniels, and um, I think Turlo's sticking around trying to out Anthony Daniels, Anthony Daniels. Here. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. Trying, he's trying to leave the Sontarans down blind alleys and things like that, and, and yeah. to kind of risk plants. Yeah. Um, yeah. and shit yeah. yes. I think shit, instead yeah. of that bit where they're going down the stairs again and again mm-hmm. well, you'd, you'd get the same thing but you'd have a kind of generic BBC spiral staircase yeah, about these bit, these bits in the TARDIS I've got such vivid memories of all the film stuff from episode oh, 6 yes. from the first time yeah. around because yeah. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. really confused me yeah me too Yeah, uh, I know the TARDIS hum is there and yeah. I registered that yeah. I, I knew they were inside the TARDIS but why doesn't this but I didn't have any memories of what the inside of the TARDIS looked like, mm. apart from the console room. Mm. Yeah, because we haven't seen that. I remember completely yeah. buying it. Yeah, I've got you know, very... I knew it was in the TARDIS, but I was I was really kind of like, wow, this is this this is what the TARDIS is like inside in yeah. big, yeah. And, and also that it was so big. That was amazing. I've got a very specific memory of them. You know, the bit where they walk down that step, the steps into the same year. Yeah, same year. Over. But for yeah. some reason, my memory of the original transmission. I kind of remember it being shot from higher up and being darker. Huh. Mm. So I can remember huh. very clearly watching those scenes uh, originally, but when I watch it now, it looks different to what my memory yeah. is. Interesting, uh, interesting. Yeah. I've had that with some scenes. This one, that one, yes, I have a very specific memory, probably because it's repeated again and again. Yeah. But it, when I saw my first pirate copy, it was absolutely frame accurate. That's exact. I remembered it exactly. Mm. And I remembered them coming down by the lift chap when he says, oh, sorry, the lift's out of order. Um, mm. which I bet is Tom Adley being to go because there's lift shaft there, yeah. uh, which is really obvious. <laughs> I remember that perfectly as well. Yeah. But um, I don't remember Store at all. Store, I fair. do. You know, I don't remember the Sontarans. <laughs> no. I do. <laughs> because yeah. as I've said before, I had my toy Sontaran with an actual spud on his head. Of course. Did you remember the Sontarans being in it before? or Both. Right. I really liked the Sontarans when I was a kid. Yeah. Do you remember the Time Warrior? No. Uh, I was right. like four. <laughs> well, I'm saying I was four, but I was only five when the Sontaran experiment was on, but I mm. can remember that. I was three when Pyramids was on. Yeah. So, yeah, they kind of leave them a bit of the runaround. Meanwhile, they've left Rodan hypnotized um, and oh, yeah. building the DMAC gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they get back in time to uh, attach the great key to it. I think this is Rodan and Nyssa. Yeah, Sorry, right, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Gun. Because the Doctor's clearly got a weird thing about hypnotising women and making them build weapons. <laughs> that's, you know, that's normal, Doctor. <laughs> that's not weird at all. Does it for him? Um, you know, they're building weapons, he's going... <laughs> he's going... Hey, yeah, turn up, turn up. It's a good... That's why he sent Turlo off to, to, to yeah. distract the Sontarans. <laughs> Turlo's leading them to plan. Turlo's doing the stuff in in the in the conservatory where where you know the doctor leads one into that massive vaginal plant, um, <laughs> you know, and it gets all sucked up and goopy. Um, we should probably mention that great scene as well by the uh, the swimming pool where uh, some tarant jumps and your head falls off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that Stuart fell. Stuart fell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuart fell. And he fell. did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was somewhere else. That wasn't the mental hospital. 
No, I mean, that was part of the original filming. Yeah, they, yes, they planned yes, for that yes. bit. They, they, they were yeah. always going to do that on location. The proper then, filming, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the proper filming. Yeah. <laughs> for the that was the probably filming. somebody's actual pool, and they, they kind mm. of watched that back and think, what's he done to my chair? Was it? <laughs> Is he doctor? I don't know. <laughs> So, yeah, the Sontaras turn up, uh, but the Doctor's yeah. built his DMAT gun just in time. He DMATs them. Yeah. But then yeah. Storr leaves the TARDIS. He's decided he's going to blow up the entire galaxy uh, mm-hmm. for reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> Sontarans. Sontarans. Yeah. It, it's worth the loss, I think. Of the- it does seem odd, though, mm. to go to all that effort with the Vardens and shit to invade Gallifrey. Yeah. And home, think, of, right. home of the control of time, mm-hmm. um, which is strategically really advantageous mm-hmm. and then after about five minutes of not doing very well go oh fuck it i'll just blow it up then yeah <laughs> this is why the sontarans aren't the daleks no <laughs> you know um if the daleks got gallifrey they'd keep gallifrey yeah and, and use bits of it in ways yeah <laughs> it's yeah. just an excuse to get them all back in the panopticon and the doctor uses the dmac gun on store in uh, the crotch in the crotch but <laughs> Mm. But it's high stakes, so he's got to do it. He's got to shoot his crotch. I suppose they're a clone species, actually, so the crotch probably isn't important to us on Tyrant. <laughs> True, yeah. It'll simply be an export valve. Yeah. Like the antiprobic vent. Probably that's what we've got <laughs> down there. It's got the other end of the probic vent, you know, some energy. Like Peter Davison. <laughs> the crotch <laughs> Um, you know, you know the shot of the um, of, of Fury from the Deep with the, the pipeline blowing off gas in the flame. Like mm. that. <laughs> <laughs> so tired bathrooms so are just something else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, Robert Holmes apparently wrote pages about their sex life. I'm not the weird one here. I'm merely <laughs> following in Holmes's footsteps. He's a policeman. <laughs> so yeah, the gun vaporizes, explodes. Yep. Yeah. And the doctor basically forgets everything. Yep. Uh, which is something I think they worked out at rehearsal, apparently. Oh, really? Apparently. It doesn't show. <laughs> it's, it's all right. That, it's all right that he's just murdered somebody because yeah. he can't remember He can't remember it. So, yeah. Tyrant? Yeah. It was better blood of the galaxy, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's all right. right. That's, that's acceptable. Don't have a go at the doctor for murdering. I mean, if you're going to do that, then we're going We're going way back. I mean, that's, how far back do we go? Yeah, where do we start? Hard, no. It's going to be hard on these bags of murder. Does Hartnell kill anyone? Well, he, he nearly kills someone in like episode two of uh, I don't know, the Child, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Nearly isn't killing. He's about no. to bash his head in with a big yeah, old About rock. to, with, with, with intention to, isn't the same as murder. <laughs> the only um, reason he doesn't is because Ian stops him. That's about he that, hits somebody with a shovel, doesn't he? Is that, that really and, and anyway, it's episode three. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the shovel is that's that's pretty hefty. That that yeah, that could kill someone. Actually, <laughs> I watched that very recently. I thought, oh Christ, he's just brained that man. Literally <laughs> brains on the deck, um, next to a sign saying Paris is that way. Uh, yeah, doctor's mad. After all, that's how it all started. So we're at the end. We yeah. all solved everything, and the doctor says, "Right, let's go." And then Nissa, out of the blue, says, "No, I'm staying with Andred." Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so that makes sense. Um, well, that's my sense. Yeah. Original. And, and a bit of track and music plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Turlo uh, stays with her as well. But fortunately, he's got Turlo Mark II in a little box in the towers. <laughs> <laughs> His ears are quieter. <laughs> you can understand why he did it. <laughs> it's actually it'll it'll actually turn out to be the amazing robot chameleon <laughs> introduced yes. in. Introduced in 1964's The King's Demons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be fine. The time round will look mm-hmm. after us. Yeah. That would be brilliant if Chameleon comes in really early on and then he's just like sitting in a room in the TARDIS for like 30 years. We can something. explain anything with it. Also, <laughs> also, if we get the mind robber in season one, we are sorted, guys. <laughs> yeah. Not a problem. Anything can be the land of fiction. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Insplainment. Was this better than the original or not so quite so good? Production values, it's going to be better. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Any no argument. In most there, respects, yeah. Apart from the model scenes. Apart from the model guess. scenes, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I think it might be a tighter um, script as well, though. Can't even yeah, the four episodes. It'll be a tighter mm. script. Yeah. Um so. it's not gonna have Tom. 
Yeah. Who does do an awful lot to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and keeps it entertaining even when the script's flagging. He does not. I like um, the original guys playing Time Lords as well. They're all very plummy and superior, and they, they do all seem very Time Lord. The, the Time yes. Lords are well cast. Yeah. Yes, yes, they are. they are. Not so much the Sometimes and Vardens, but the Time Lords, the spot. Yeah. Yeah, the Vardens are going to be infinitely improved. There's no mm. way they cannot be. Mm. Yes. There is no way, even if Lee John, by default, ends up playing Lee something, the Lee Varden. Because yeah. um, I haven't heard anything of them. The Santarans, I, I think they're going to be almost equally as shit. Mm. Not yeah. as badly played if it's Clinton Grain. Uh, oh no, who, oh, we had John Thor, didn't we? It's, uh, but the mask Christopher is going to let it down. Christopher Ryan. The mask is oh yeah, Christopher. The mask is really good actually for store. The makeup. Yeah, we were talking about shots, this yeah. the other day. We were yeah. seeing that uh, in in some stills and in some of the film yeah. shots, it looks good, it's and then it just looks terrible in. on video. It's mm. it's yeah. it's because you've uh, you're doing it across film on location. Yeah. Two different blocks on location mm. and studio in the mm. Panopticon. Store yeah. basically has to, Store's face has to appear in every single block that you're doing in this thing. Yeah. It's mm. completely mad anyway because of what shot where. Yeah. So it's it's kind of not surprising. But then Polaroids. Yeah. You no, know, it's it's why he suddenly gets really black eyes and black around the mouth. I don't know. He's tired. Unless the mask perished. But I, I don't know, it just, yeah, he is tired. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> a long day, bless him. I, I, at the end of the day, I, I, I like the invasion of time. I forgive a lot of its faults because of how it was made. I don't yeah. forgive a lot yeah. of its I faults mean, because they're was, really down to bizarre choices. Yeah. I, I mean, I was saying about this, you know, I was criticising the script and saying the script was flabby and could have done with being tighter, but... How would any of us cope with writing a script under those circumstances, under those time pressures? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Given how quickly it was written, yeah. it, it, it yeah. did an okay job. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, um, it's better than Ark of Infinity, you know, so you can't... Yeah. Yeah. It is. So, yeah, okay. Um, so we're not really decided. It kind of goes both ways, though, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Marks out of ten? Seven? seven. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. thinking seven, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll go with that as well then, because it's a right. good consensus. <laughs> yeah. um, and speaking of numbers, mm -hmm. hey. that was a good segue. Yeah. Patrick Troughton, my friends. Oh, oh yeah. Patrick of the Trouts. Patrick of the Troughton. In story two five nine. That is late. Okay, it's going to be Patrick Trout starring in <laughs> Sleep No More. Sleep No More? Oh. Well, that might make it interesting. Well, mm. yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not... Um... <laughs> It's not oh, a good man be... goes to war, so that's uh... not quite a good no, man goes to war. Be... No, it's uh, yeah, it's Sleep No More's fine. That's, yeah. The, yeah. that's the live one with sand, isn't it? Yeah, yeah they, it has a live one. Yeah, where they got oh, this uh, will be amazing. Yeah, they... this will be amazing. Yeah. Put this in black and white. Yeah, yeah. Six yeah. Um, mm. in yeah. an era that, that relies on spooks and fear mm. and stuff like that. Yeah, oh, this will be this will be this will be fantastic. Mm -hmm. This yeah. will be the redemption of Steep No More. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So, on that bombshell, we've been listening to Time Ram. Why? <laughs> uh, thanks for coming. If you want to help Why? the show. <laughs> 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 thanks for listening. <laughs> if you want to help the show. Do please leave us a review somewhere like Apple Podcasts or Listen Notes, uh, Podchaser, various places that you can leave a review. Go for a base. Just help promote the show. Mm, go on base. forums. Go on yeah. forums. Tell them about us. Go on Facebook. Go yeah. on Twitter. Go all the places. Yeah, yeah. Go to yeah. them now. Yeah. Now. Spread the word. We're on Twitter. You can find us on Twitter using the hashtag TimeRam. I'm on there as at BazTimeRam. Paul is at Paul Variated. Rupert is at Rupert Booth. Uh, we also have a Patreon site if you'd like to support us more financially there. Uh, we'd be most grateful. I could really uh, do with a new microphone. I mean, you know, a good one like Basil and Paul have got. I haven't got one of them. Give us yeah. one of them. Yeah. And a camera that works. And a camera that well, works. That would help, yeah. <laughs> really. 
I also need to thank Ben Jones for the music. So before I forget, thank you, Ben Jones. Thank you, Ben Jones. We'll see you next thank time you, with um, who is it? Patrick, Patrick, Patrick Trouton in Sleep No More. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> I was just watching Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD the other last nice. week and uh, I, I just love the bit of the big battle at the end of that where there's a Dalek and they chug a top hauling over it and it's just like that's it it's finished it's just, it's, it <laughs> yeah. doesn't move <laughs> you know that one that melts yeah that's a full size Dalek. That's a full size yeah, rubber Dalek. <laughs> okay. Imagine. Imagine that. Someone once built a full size rubber Dalek. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking before when I was like, that, that's going to become the theme for I am sexually aroused now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I must remember to not carry that through into real life. That'd be really bad. <laughs> Direct checkpoint. Direction point! A Doctor Who Podcast Network.